Welcome to Touring the Gables presented by the Carroll Smith team. We're here at 423 Aragon Avenue, a beautiful home built in 1925 with three bedrooms and two bathrooms and a cottage in the back. Today we're heading to a historic place in the city of Coral Gables, the place where many think the dream for Coral Gables began. Coral Gables Merrick House. We're standing outside Coral Gables Merrick House because I want to give you a little bit of a hint as to how this house and our fair city came to be known. In late 1899, when Solomon Greasley Merrick and his son George, our city's founder, first arrived on their 160-acre homestead, which they had purchased sight unseen, they didn't encounter anything that looked like this. Well, because of the hard work of Solomon and the fact that he had a very green thumb and he was able to depend on his son, George, who was 13 when he first moved here and put eight long years of very hard labor into the farm, they were able to succeed and by 1906, George's mother, Althea Carilla Fink Merrick, was able to design the home of her dreams. Now back then, it was the tradition to name your home, especially if it, if it was to become something as grand as this house was at the time. Well, this rock for this house actually came from a pit that was um, in the area that eventually became the Venetian Pool, and it's affectionately known as Coral Rock. So, that's the beginning of the, the name of this, of this house in this city. And then, if we look up, up to the gables, we'll see that they are very pronounced. They are um, rather steep. So rather than among the pines, which very poetic Althea wanted for her home, um, it came to be known as Coral Gables. The house as, as it appears today is much as it appeared in 1925. Um, that's the year that Althea, Mother Merrick, felt that it really was at its zenith. Just so happens to be the same year that the city of Coral Gables was incorporated. 60% of the furnishings in the house are original to either the Merrick offices or the Merrick family. And that's remarkable because of this. In 1966, the house went on the market. And in those years, the idea of historic preservation hadn't really landed in Miami quite yet. So a house like this was not valued as it is today. Well, a gentleman by the name of W.L. Philbrick came along and said, I need to make sure that this house is not demolished. It needs, to be, it needs to be preserved. And I'm certain that the city of Coral Gables will be very interested in doing that. Well, he purchased the house from the Merricks and found out that the city wasn't so interested. It took him 10 years to, to finally convince the city that this was a house that was worthy of preservation. So in 1976, the city purchased the house and women of the Junior League worked feverishly to change the house into a historic home museum. So we're very lucky to have so much of the furnishings having returned to the house because all of the Merrick uh, colleagues and family members were contacted and generously donated pieces back to the house. Throughout the house you're going to find that the art is uh, created by the family. They were a very artistic family. They valued literature, oration, and art. You'll see that the uh, paintings were either done by Althea, George's mother, George's uncle, Denman Fink, another name we'll hear a lot about, or George's youngest brother, Richard. There's an awful lot more to this story, and we invite you to come and spend some time with us at the Merrick House. We're open Saturdays and Sundays, and our tours are at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 3 o'clock. And we can also be reached for special tours during the week if they're prearranged. So we hope to see you here and celebrate the history of this wonderful family. Uh, as I said, lots more stories to tell. Thank you.
that's all the time we have for today. If you're looking to buy, sell, or lease a home, contact your friends at the Carol Smith team. Tune in next time for another Touring the Gables presented by the Carol Smith team. Thank you.